So how many of you have heard the phrase, beauty is pain? What if I told you that beauty does not have to equal or be pain? And it doesn't take pain to be beautiful. Stick around and we're going to talk about what I mean by beauty isn't pain on today's Fox Talk. sitting and you're watching this um sit down relax get your coffee get your snack whatever it is you choose to have um i have nothing on my table today today is all talk <clears throat> excuse me today is all talk so with that being said i'm going to move forward and remind you that i will be reading my notes that's in my blog and talking to you at the same time all the things that i discuss um, there will be um, presented pictures and, you know, things for you to take notes. Um, and from there, we're going to move on into our topic. Okay, so welcome back to Locks Talk, where I talk about things locks and loose natural, all things locks and loose natural. Last week, I talked about oily hair and, and, and locks and the effects it has on the hair and the scalp when it is overused. In that discussion, I scratched the surface, no pun intended, on cleaning the scalp with proper hair washing techniques. This week, I will go further in depth and discuss preventive care for the scalp and remedies to keep your scalp clean and healthy. I will also discuss the prevention of, healthy, of health hazards by doing one simple thing, reading the labels. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the importance of reading the labels and knowing the effects that the ingredients in your products can have on your health can spare you unnecessary suffering. We all want to be beautiful. We all want beautiful and luxurious hair, but at what cost? In this discussion, you will find you do not have to suffer for beauty should not equal pain. Okay, so we're going to talk about the why. There are a number of reasons why we wash our hair. I'm sure you would agree. The most popular one, of course, is to remove dirt and oil. Um, but there is more crucial reasons why it is important to wash your hair properly and regularly. Even if your hair doesn't feel or look dirty and oily, Let's take a step back and let's revisit some of what I touched on last week. Remember when I pointed out the fact that not only does oil seal in moisture, but it also seals in bacteria entering the hair follicles and simply sitting there. I don't know about you, but the thought of that, the thought of bacteria sitting in my pores on my head, that scares me a little, you know, let's look further into what this bacterium is and what it can do to your scalp. Okay. The most common scalp infection that can occur from bacteria is called folliculitis. Folliculitis is an infection in the hair follicle and the bacterial, the bacterium, <laughs> um, I can't even pronounce, not pronounce this staph, low color, staph. <laughs> I'm going to write it on here so you can see what it is and understand why I can't pronounce it. I'm not going to try, you know. Um, it's responsible for the cause of folliculitis. This is a fungal infection that can cause inflammation to the scalp. According to several medical journals I've researched and compared to one another, I read that some of the major complications that occur as a result of folliculitis are abscesses, which is a confined pocket of pus that collects in the tissue. 
yeah. Um, boils under the skin. If you had a boil, you know what that is. And it hurt to all high hell. <laughs> um, inflamed hair follicles, redness, swelling, painful follicles due to the infection. Okay. And destruction of hair follicles. Now, if the hair follicle is destroyed, then you can't grow hair. And if it was hair in it, you're going to lose that hair. So folliculitis is caused by bacteria getting into the pore. Okay. So just remember that when that happens, you have to be sure not to... Um, Scratch your scalp. Remember I was talking about bacteria being under your fingernails also. And overusing oil on your head after, especially after you haven't washed it in a while. So be careful. Be very careful in that aspect, okay? So now let's look at how we can prevent this from happening, right? To prevent this from happening, it is important to cleanse your scalp regularly. A clean scalp minimizes the presence of bacteria. Just think of what happens to your face if you didn't wash it every day. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, well, the same thing can happen to your scalp when it isn't cleaned properly and on a regular basis. And even worse, because your hair follicles are much larger than it was on your face, meaning the bigger living space for bacteria to make a home. Yeah, not cute. All right. It is also important to avoid scratching your scalp with your fingernails, as I said a few minutes ago, especially because of the germs and bacteria that live under the fingernails, but also massaging your scalp too aggressively to relieve an itch should be avoided as much as possible. So even if your scalp is itching, which is why a lot of times people, they do this. And a lot of times people think that it's because there's a weave. No, because they know dirt and bacteria can collect under there and things like that. And you really can't get to it the way you want to get to it when you're washing it. So get used to the weave pad. <laughs> and if you don't want to do that, then we'll get to how you can cleanse your scalp without actually having to always shampoo and wash your hair. Before we get into preventive care and tactics that we can do to prevent it, what if the damage is already done? How do I treat folliculitis? Let's go first with that, okay? First things first. Folliculitis should be diagnosed by a board certified dermatologist. Once you receive a proper diagnosis, most treatment can be done at home. But for more severe cases, folliculitis is treated with med medication, antibiotics, under your doctor's care. To treat at home, you will need to start with a good wash using a medicated shampoo. This can be done with a prescribed shampoo given to you from your dermatologist, or you can use an over-the-counter store-bought shampoo that is recommended by your dermatologist. Okay, For treatment and care of the scalp after shampooing, you can use cortisone cream to help soothe the inflamed scalp as it heals. One really great home remedy is using organic apple cider vinegar. Just the vinegar. Not the detox you see on YouTube with people using vinegar and baking soda. Not the same, okay? Um, I lost my place. <laughs> okay. Apple cider vinegar is known as an antimicrobial agent. To use it properly, now write this down, I'm going to note it also, but to use it properly, you must dilute it. I've spoken about this before. When you're using ACV on your hair, it has to be used diluted. Do not pour ACV directly on your hair as you have seen done before. I'm sure many of you have, if you're on YouTube watching this, you've seen other videos on YouTube concerning ACV. Don't pour it directly on your hair. It should always be diluted when you're using it, okay? Um, the proper formulated dilution for ACV vinegar is one tablespoon per half a cup of water. That's the dilution that it should be, okay? Um, once you do that, you can use a soaked cotton ball or a 
sterile gauze and soak it and you put it on the infected area where on your scalp for 20 minutes twice a day until the infection is gone so that helps treat the um the infection that's on your scalp now getting back to preventive care home remedies home remedies this is not um care that is under doctor's care doctor's care is based on the instructions that your doctor may give you these are strictly home remedies and again don't self-diagnose make sure that you get an actual diagnosis from a dermatologist and if it's a mild case then you can consider home remedies to heal it okay so preventive care is to prevent it from happening where well, you won't have to go to a doctor and be diagnosed with folliculitis it is preventive care to keep bacteria from building up and getting in your scalp to begin with okay as a preventive step to avoid folliculitis, I wash my hair with Peculiar Roots ACB shampoo. Um, I have shown, this time I'm going to put a picture of it up. <laughs> um, I always use ACB shampoo for one of my washes, which is usually the first one for that very purpose. Okay, ACB is a great agent for cleaning the hair in addition to treating the scalp. Diluted, not straight from the bottle. Okay. Um, some of the great benefits of cleansing your hair with ACV is it helps prevent product buildup because it acts as a clarifying agent and it helps to balance the pH levels of your hair and it reduces frizziness and it keeps the hair soft. Yeah, believe it or not, it does. Um, so keeping the stock supply of my peculiar ACV shampoo is highly recommended because well it's not my shampoo but i'm saying i keep a stock of uh, a good stock of acv shampoo in my supply is what i meant to say um for that purpose because i don't want to use actual organic acv on my hair it has you know vinegar doesn't have a great smell but the benefits of it is fantastic and i love that i can have those benefits with my acv shampoo but because it's um apple extract scent so it smells like fresh crisp apples instead of apple cider vinegar you know so that's a, that's, that's a plus and that's why i prefer to use that rather than now if i had an infection i would definitely use the vinegar i don't care how funky it smells i need to you know get get it together up there so yeah okay now coming back to another preventive care um we talked about this last week and I'm going to talk more about it again this week is tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is also a great preventive agent to help avoid folliculitis. It also aids in the treatment and folliculitis as well. So it's a preventive care. It's a double agent. It prevents and can be used to help treat folliculitis. Okay. Before I go further with this, let me remind you. Okay, knowing the benefits of tea tree oil, people tend to go out and buy some and then they skip over the proper use of it and they use it directly on their hair. That's a big mistake. Okay, follow the instructions properly. All right, with that being said, please read the next part carefully. Now, this is what my blog says, but please listen carefully for you. Okay. <clears throat> First things first, tea tree oil is a very highly concentrated essential oil. It's one of many, okay? And, <clears throat> excuse me, it should not be applied directly to the skin for that purpose. For every one to two drops of tea tree oil, it should be diluted with 12 drops of a carrier oil, such as coconut oil, olive oil, or other plant-based oils, okay? Um... Do not let it get into your eye. All right. Now, to use for folliculitis preventive care and treatment, apply the oil mixture to your scalp and allow it to stay for 20 minutes. Then using a shampoo that contains no more than 5% tea tree oil, wash out the oil mixture. Do this for at least two wash cycles. Then you can follow it with a conditioner, a, a tea tree conditioner. Also, make sure that you read the label and it says it has no more than 5% tea tree oil in it. Otherwise, it's too highly concentrated. 
This is a great holistic way to treat mild folliculitis, not severe. Okay. If you have severe, you're definitely going to need to use medicated shampoo to treat it. But if you have a mild case of folliculitis, then you can use tea tree oil, um, tea tree oil shampoo, tea tree oil conditioner to treat it and it will get better. Okay. Now we're going to move on. Okay. Moving along. Let's talk about sweat. Let's talk about sweat, baby. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Another way for bacteria to get into the hair follicles. It, if you work out on a regular basis and you sweat a lot, then this segment right here is for you. The moisture from perspiration can cause bacteria growth. Sweat can dry on your scalp and can potentially clog your hair follicles as it can mix with bacteria and irritate or damage your scalp. That's one of the causes for your hair suddenly itching like crazy after a workout. For the love of God, whatever you do, don't scratch, okay? Your scalp if this happens. The importance of leave, cleaning your scalp after a workout is crucial to the health of your scalp. It is obvious that whether you have locks or loose natural hair, you aren't going to be washing your hair after you work out every single time. I get it. Okay. So how do you clean your scalp without shampooing every day? I'll tell you how. First, avoid letting the sweat dry by letting before getting to it. And that, because that contradicts what I just said about the sweat drying and joining with the bacteria and going down and making it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that, make sure we get to it before that happens. All right. The magic happens with witch hazel. Witch hazel. Good old fashioned witch hazel. Okay. It cleanses all your producing pores and relieves itching. If you sweat every day on your scalp, Here's the great news. Witch hazel is gentle enough to get to every day and a little bit goes a long way. You just need a clean terry white cloth, cotton balls. I like to use Q-tips, okay? And then apply it. Or you can even put it in a spritz bottle, but make sure that the spritz bottle is spraying a mist. Very similar to how you see the refresher spray bottles when you see me mist my hair. Okay. But never a stream. You don't want to put a stream because you, you don't need all it dripping down your face and things like that. Okay. And you're probably thinking, well, what about the odor that can get in my locks or my hair from sweating? I'm glad you asked. The odor that you would normally smell because of sweat, that mildewy funk. Well, I'm I'm that's caused by the mixture of sweat and bacteria. This is why cleaning your scalp directly with the witch hazel before the sweat dries is necessary. It kills the bacteria. Kill the bacteria, kill the smell. Okay? And you'll likely not experience that stench. Now, if it happens to be a person, if you happen to be a person that just hates the smell of sweat, well, my solution to that is I highly recommend the Peculiar Roots Rose Water Based Refresher Spray. Now the refresher spray will not only help tend to your scalp and the itchiness and things like that, but it also will provide a very fresh and lovely fragrance to your hair. And not um not something that's that's um synthetic or anything like f fresh fragrance of real items like roses and extracts from roses and pineapple extract and cucumber melon scent and then you got the caribbean vibes it has a, this coconutty like island adventure scent crisp apple um cherry blossoms so you're going to have really nice natural scents but they smell amazing and then with you know your worry of smelling like funky mildew <laughs> will be gone but if you do have an allergy to uh, rose water. The um, other refresher spray that was um, recently introduced 
was the aloe refresher spray, which I actually recommend even more than the rose water based refresher spray because it has aloe in it and it also, witch hazel is one of the ingredients in it. So you're going to kill two birds with one stone. You're going to treat your scalp with the witch hazel that's going to kill the bacteria and, and soothe the itch and the aloe is also going to really soothe your scalp and just make it feel. And the smell is absolutely amazing. It smells like you just freshly got out of the shower. So that's how I would do that and go from there so yeah that's how we do get rid of the sweat and stuff like that so just keep that in mind if you sweat tend to it before it dries okay yeah. that's why when i work out i don't like to cover my head i'll put something to cut you know pull my hair back out of my face but i don't like to cover my head because i don't want there to be a sweat steam bath going on under scarf or hat and stuff on my head now that we have fully covered how to properly cleanse the scalp and hair, let's step into reading labels and the ingredients you should try to avoid if you see them listed. Okay, note, in next week's vlog, we are going to dive really deep into these ingredients and why they should be avoided. Um, just that quick, I lost my spot. Oh, but this week I will scratch the surface. Again, no pun intended. Uh, there are a number of ingredients and products you should avoid using if you are considering the health of your hair as well as your overall physical health. So this is why I'm talking about these ingredients, okay? Let me scroll down. As you have seen in my blogs and throughout many areas of my website, I consistently recommend Peculiar Roots products. And I'm going to tell you why. There is an array of reasons why I recommend this product, but at the very top of my list of why is what's on the label, the ingredients. Tara Donnelly, the founder of Peculiar Roots, really did her homework and researched the products that are harmful to us, and she created a formula that does not contain these harmful ingredients. That shows a great deal of character and the care that she has put in helping us to keep and maintain a healthy crown. As I said before, I do not require you to use Peculiar Roots. However, I do highly recommend it. it. Took me five years to find it, but you have the opportunity to use it now. Okay. Um... Let me tell you, okay, your roots provides all of the above on my checklist when it came to me using the product. The label displays the ingredients that benefit my hair based on my needs, and that is what impressed me the most. Even more so, it contains none of the ingredients known to cause long-term damage. The fact that the product's quality is amazing and the organic scents are amazing is simply an added benefit. Let's just call it what it is. Amazing. So here is a list of nine ingredients you should avoid using if you see them on the labels of cosmetic products you may use. Number one, sulfate. Sulfate is an aggressive chemical that is extremely drying for your hair. Number two, Mineral oil. Mineral oil is a liquid byproduct of refining crude oil to make gas and other petroleum products. Note, anything that says byproduct is not good for you. If you have pets and you read the ingredients on their pet food and it says um, byproducts in it, that's not a healthy pet food for them. So just keep in mind when you hear byproduct, it's not really a good agent. Number three, parabens, a group of chemical compounds used as a preservatives in pharmaceutical and cosmetic products, extremely hazardous to your health. And I'm going to go further into why that is. Number four, denatured alcohols. It speaks for itself. Anything that's alcohol, like like I like rubbing alcohol, when you see when you rub it on and it turns white, anything with like alcohol that strong in it 
it's very bad for your hair. It could dry out your hair. It's not good for you. Again, all of these things that I'm listing, I'm going to go, I'm going to take a deep nose dive into and explain why these are some of the top worst ingredients that could be in the products that you're using for your hair and any of your cosmetics, including stuff that you use on your skin for skin care as well. Okay, now number five is more for people who suffer from high, you know, allergies and stuff like that. Synthetic fragrances. It's harmful if you suffer from allergies. Now, I'm not saying that don't use anything with synthetic fragrances in it, period, ever. But be cautious of using things with synthetic fragrances in it, especially if you have allergies because it can. And I'm not just talking about like sneezing and coughing, but skin allergies. Number six, coal tar. Coal tar is a byproduct, byproduct found in dyes to color products. Now, I'm not talking about hair dye. I'm talking about... Um, is used like if you seen soda, Coca Cola, <laughs> and things like that. That color comes from coal tar, believe it or not. But it's a very small dose of it, but it does come from coal tar. Um, and it goes deeper than that. Like coal tar is also found in specific shampoos that's used to treat psoriasis. And if there's too much of it in there, it can cause some major damage to your overall health as well. So again, going much further in depth with it next week but this is to scratch the surface so avoid any product especially if you're going to see it probably written for um, shampoos and you know some cosmetics if you see coal tar avoid it it's been banned in a lot of countries Seven. you've heard me mention this a few times before silicone Silicone affects the strength and appearance of your hair, causing a weighty feel, dryness, and it's hard to remove the buildup. It also blocks hair follicles, which can lead to hair loss. Number eight, phthalates, spelled P-H-T-A-A-L-A-T-E-S. The P-H is silent and is pronounced phthalates. Phthalates are chemicals that make plastic soft. So why is it in your cosmetics and hair products? Good question. Okay. Phthalates are highly hazardous to your health. Very highly hazardous to your health. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Keep that in mind. Phthalates. P-H-T-A-A-L-A-T-E-S. And number nine. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a colorless, pungent gas in solution made by oxidizing methanol. The fumes can cause, the fumes caused by a reactive formaldehyde causes major respiratory problems. Okay, so all of the ingredients I listed can be hazardous to your overall health, not just your hair. Reading the labels of the products you use is very important to assure you know what's being used to formulate those products. This is primarily the reason why I stand firmly behind a product I consistently recommend to you. The founder and CEO took the time to study the ingredients to assure we have a long-term healthy hair journey. Pecaya Roots are, is made by us, for us. Next week, I will discuss in more detail the hazards of using and overusing ingredients and chemicals and the long-term effects they have on your health. Until next time, have a healthy and healthy hair, have a healthy hair and lock journey. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel where I'm going to provide you with as much information as possible to educate you and make sure that you know everything or as much as you can possibly know about taking care of your locks or your natural hair and using things properly, formulating things properly, and so on and so forth. I will provide you with um, demos. Actually, I'm, I redid another one just a couple of days ago. 
and I'm going to be posting that as well. Um, actually, may add it to this video. I'm not sure. Hmm. But until then, um, the pr um, products that I recommended in this blog is the ACV Shampoo, Rose Water Refresher Spray, Aloe Vera Refresher Spray. And also, you can use the Vegan Detox to like detox. And it, especially if you make sure you get your whole head down in there and your scalp because it's really good on your scalp as well. So keep that in mind. Thank you for watching. Until next week. Bye.